Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cosi's Arsenal podcast channel. We are going to be discussing Emily Smith Rowe, Martin Odegaard. Take it as a comparison, take it as um, a, a way of harnessing the two talents. How can we get the best out of them? It's been a big debate. Emily Smith Rowe, is he going to be get dropped? Is, is he going to get dropped? Uh, Martin Odegaard, what he brings to Arsenal and how his uh, how his arrival impacts and affects um emil smith so we are going to be I, i'm basically going to be looking at those two things I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a comparison on how to play how on how both players play but i'm also going to look at how we can use both of them on the same pitch i'll answer one of the questions that have uh, that has always come on my comments uh because compare for me how Semua and Martin Odegaard, how different are they? How similar are they? So we're going to be looking at that. And but first and foremost, smash the like button, get your subscriptions in and comment. What do you think about Martin Odegaard after he got his debut against Manchester United? 10 minutes, some people said he was fascinating, he was good. Um, other people said Michael Arteta should have left uh, Emily Smith Rowe on. So what do you think about that? I think... Um, yeah, and to be honest, I didn't see much of Martin Martin Odegaard, uh, you know, like I've seen Emily Smith Rowe or like I saw Emily Smith Rowe in that game. But that doesn't mean he wasn't good enough. That doesn't mean um, his performance was not up to the test. So what did you make of his performance? And uh, do you think in the next game against Wolves, do you think he should be the player uh, starting in that number 10 role, in, in into that number 10 space ahead of Emily Smith Rowe? I'll start with the comparison uh, between the two players. I think... Odegaard is far way more talented than um, Emily Smith Rowe. And uh, um, most of you, because you're Arsenal fans and both players are ours, uh, at least at the moment, for the short while we have Martin Odegaard for five months, um, you do agree that both players um, are really talented. But Odegaard's talent is far ahead, is far clear of, uh, of Emily Smith Rowe. That doesn't mean me, um, um, I, I really do not trade Emily Smith Rowe. I think he's one of the most technically gifted players at Arsenal, especially in the young talents. I think behind uh, behind Martinelli, I'll bring... I think behind Martinelli, I'll bring Emily Smith-Rowe, then Saka. I think Saka is 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 is, is, is a hard-working player. Talented as well, but more of a uh, hard-working, the runs, and, 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 and very, very, very decisive. I, I, I love the way uh, he decides at the right time, in the right moment, in the right spaces, the right people, the right balls. I think... Everything is just moving so well for him, but I think when it comes to talent and 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 being ta you know technically gifted, I think Emily Smith Rowe and Gabriel Martinelli are also clear of him. But Odegaard brings something to Arsenal very very different, something so different that Emily Smith Rowe actually doesn't. And, and it, it's it's a little bit unfortunate that we have to use these two players, um, you know, in the same spaces. But one at a time. I just pray. I, I, I just I, I just want to see both of them on on the same pitch. Of course, that means Granny Jacka gets dropped, and, and, and many people are gonna tell me, "Cause see, Granny Jack has been doing so well. He cannot, dro you know, you cannot drop him right now." And I agree with you. For the past five games, six games, I think Granny Jacka has been the man um, in that midfield. Yesterday, he was playing with uh, Thomas Partey, and I was like, "Okay, it looks like you know a perfect you know a perfect partnership uh, between Granny Jacka and Thomas Partey." But Martin Odegaard, when you, you know, when you put him ahead of Partey and Granny Chaka, first and foremost, he helps us, you know, drive that ball forward. Now, Emily Smith, make no mistake, Emily Smith Road, you know, does that all the time. He has done that, whether he has the ball or he doesn't have the ball, he drives that ball forward. He, you know, he makes the forward runs. He, he makes sure that inside that, you know, 18, year, you know, 18 years box, there is space utilized. You could see when we are, when, when we are still using Ceballos, Jaka and Mohamed El Neni because the party was injured. We had three midfielders, but we had a lot of spaces uncovered in the midfield. Why? Most of you know, actually, those players, the three of them, have something in common. Pass the ball sideways, 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 sideways. They are like drive, you know, drive this ball forward, but you cannot get into dangerous areas. That's what they offer. Now, Martin Odegaard and Emily Smith Rowe, that is what they give you. They give you that that ability to get into the final third into the dangerous areas. And I think Emily Smith did that uh, against Manchester United. All the chances we created, he had a hand in them. When Martin Odegaard came on, he tried to do the same, ask for the ball in that number 10 space and try to look for the striker, which was, um, uh, of course, it was a little bit unfortunate that Alexander Lacazette had to come off and um, Edin Ketia came on, who I think is, you know, becoming more and more useless, you know, by the day or by, um, by the time. But 
how can these two play together? That's a big question. Um, as we try to compare them, what are their abilities? Can they even play together? Can Mikel Arteta even try to line, uh, line them up um, in the same lineup? And this is where we go. Martin Odegaard, Emily Smith Rowe, can they play like David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne, uh, you know, like they were? Just, uh, you know, I think for two seasons, were they, was it for two seasons under Pep Guardiola at Manchester City? Playing two half eights, but they have, you know, when they are very free. Because for, I think Odegaard, w one of the things that Odegaard has is he's going to keep behind the 18 years box. What Emily Smith Road does is stretches play in the right wings in the left wings he, you know he's very good at that and and if you see most of the chances he has created okay i'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to give you two examples one um that goal alexander lacazette scored against um a, a, against brighton emily smith rowe stretching play um a, again um to the wings another goal i think was pl emerica bamayang against newcastle again emily smith rowe stretching play to the wings and i think that that, that is why i do not agree with many people who, who think we might not be able to use these two players at once. I think Emily Smith Rowe is very good. Yeah, he you know he utilized the same space as Odegaard, but he loves to go out in the wings. It's, it's all about the manager trying to you know to, to 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 make space for him because for him he works on the wings. He works out you know uh, he stretches play. He makes the field a, a, a little bit bigger uh, that man than Martin Odegaard does. Now Martin Odegaard is another. Um, Eden has a kind of player. He's another Mesiros kind of player. Give him the ball. He's going to ask for the ball from the wings and then try to tap into that space ahead of him. Just like you would see Bruno Fernandes. You know, he, he, you know, he doesn't want to or he doesn't work, you know, with stretched play. He wants to work, um, you know, just in front of goal, just, you know, uh, behind or in front of that 18 years box. And I think that is why the, you know, the, the two players can play. But my only problem with them is none of them is defensively solid. None of them is defensively gifted. If you have Emily Smith Rowe, just look at see. Of course, um, the third player in that midfield is Thomas Partey. So that means you're putting all the defensive burden in the midfield on Thomas Partey. The ball recoveries, um, okay, everything, anything you know concerning defense is going to be on Thomas Partey, and that's a big job. And that's I think Partey enjoys that em that environment where he has another defensive player or a player who has defensive abilities uh, playing with him. He's played very well with Mohamed Elneny. He has played very well with, with, with Granit Xhaka. And you could see he doesn't really fare well when Shebayos um, is, is, is playing with him in the midfield. And, and, and I think that is something that now we know. Pate, he loves the adventures. He loves the travels. He wants to, you know, maneuver through the midfield. If you want to use him, then do not get, um, you know, another eight on him get a number you know some kind of a number six uh to play with him so i think that's the only thing that could actually limit emily smith Rowe with martin odegaard to play but i would love to see the, you know i would love to see them play uh together because i think they just bring out the idea of 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 of, of Mikel Arteta. press 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 just like you know pep Guardiola. if you have watched pep Guardiola's teams they do not have time for you know to look for the ball and when when city were losing games many people were asking this question what is going you know what's going on with city and for me i think it was only one problem that fernandino as, as as a defender that means they were not able to you know pick up that ball from the opponent and keep it their midfield was i think i, I think they had gundogan they had kevin de Bruyne, and i think they had rodri uh, playing in the midfield so whenever they lost that ball it took them a lot of time to pick it back because the player who has to who has to do that in Fernandino is way back in you know in in, in the central defense. Now Fernandino is, is is back in the midfield. They have Ruben Diaz, who I think is doing brilliantly, by the way. Um, and they also have, uh, they have John Stones, who has had a revolutionary turnaround of his career this season. They are brilliant. They are scoring five, six goals, four goals, because their midfield is complete again. And 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 if you see. Pep Guardiola, wherever he has been, he uses just one. Just one defensive midfielder. It's either Fernandino at Manchester City. If you go back at Bayern Munich, he was using Javi Martinez. If you go back at Barcelona, he was using um, uh, you know, Busquets. Just one. of, just one. He, he doesn't need so many. And I think if you want to press and press and press, then you have to get... Um, you, 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 you've got to you know, get rid of um, the timid instincts. Yeah, you've got to get rid of th those timid instincts. Use 
two attacking midfielders, that is Odegaard and Smith Rowe, David Silva and Kevin Debron, something like that. And then uh, you have one, of course, it requires you to have one very good defensive midfielder. I think Pate provides that. I think Busquets provided that. And I think Javi Martinez at Bayern uh, also provided that for, 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 for Pep Guardiola. So I think this is one of the way we could actually line up with Martin Odegaard. The other way I've seen um, we could line up with Martin Odegaard and Emily Smith Rowe, if, if we use Smith Rowe as a right winger or a left winger, but I don't know how I should explain this, but just you saw how Arsene Wenger was using Aaron Ramsey at Arsenal. I think it makes sense because it was a big question. Can Wilshere and Aaron Ramsey actually play together in the same team? Now, Wilshere is more of a number eight or you can call him that kind of midfielder that is static. He doesn't want to change. He doesn't want to go to, um, you know, to play a, a, as a seven, as a number eight. He can't play that. But Ramsey could. He's very, very versatile. You know, he could play all over the midfield. So what Arsene Wenger did, use Ramsey as a right midfield winger. Yeah? And I think Emily Smith-Rowe can do that. Not, you know, not going to the byline to cross the balls. Not, because even Ramsey didn't do that. But he practically has that free role to, you know, to, to maneuver throughout the midfield, get into goal-scoring positions, get into um, chance-creating positions, um, you know, something like that. But like I said, it should be Thomas Partey, uh, you know, getting the defensive burden uh, in that case. Now, going down to the question, how compare for me Odegaard and how Samoa. It's not an easy question, but it's easy in this sense. I think both players are very different just you could see emily smith rowe and odegaard many people think they are similar they are not similar they're different this kind of play is different they just utilize the same spaces and i think for for for, for how samoa and odegaard they are very different to an extent that they don't they do not even operate in the same spaces odegaard works in tight spaces i told you he works you know he just works in that you know in in, in that area where he wants you know where the you know he, he could be able to spot the striker spot the, the the full backs spot the wingers and you know get a perfect ball onto their boots how samoa on the other side he's you know he's you know what he does is get me the ball and i'm gonna drive it from my box to martin odegaard that, you know, that is what he does. And, we, you know, many people have tried to, you know, make him a number 10 because, you know, Arsenal wanted this creative kind of player. And, and we were saying, you know, how Samoa is a number 10. He's not, he's not a number 10. He's never played. You know, he has never played as a number 10. And his statistics and figures, I've always told you, they suggest that. But the reason as to why, you know, he's very expensive, yet his figures in scoring goals and, 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 and assists are very low, is because he's, you know, what he does is not that. Basically, what he does is get me the ball and I'm going to drive it forward. You know, make a case of Paul Pogba at Manchester United. If, even if Pogba doesn't score, even if Pogba doesn't, you know, even if Pogba doesn't create a chance, nobody's going to come and say Pogba, Pogba. No, as long as he can do what is required of, get that ball, get the long balls, get the short passes, get the, you know, break through the lines, make sure your opponents are getting the supply. So I think, I think that's how Samoa, but... Well, and and, and if, if we had how Samoa and Odegaard, it would be very easy. Both of them just play into the same team. Odegaard in front of how Samoa and Thomas Partey. As simple as that. But for Emily Smith Rowe, the difference is both of them work in the same spaces. However much they have a very different playing style. Like you saw um, Kevin Debron. You know, when, when you look at Debron, he's like, you want to use him as an, a, a number eight. But this kind of number eight that is always in the number 11, number seven, number 10, you know, positions. And he's so comfortable on the ball. That is Emily Smith Rowe. Martin Odegaard is another Mesut Ozil. Of course, if you have seen Mesut Ozil, you know, he wants to work in those spaces behind the striker. But he's always in the number 11, in the number 10, in the number seven. He's all, you know, he's always all over the pitch. He wants to score the goals and he wants to get in those areas where he can create chances. But I think... It would go down on Mikel Arteta. Does he want to use this, you know, the, the two players uh, together? I think it would be very, very fascinating to see them uh, together. Um, it would work on a game, in, in a game where you, you're playing a team with a low block. Burnley, West Brom, um, Sheffield. 
because these you know th th these are teams that know they cannot match the quality of us no um you know if you know head to head so what they do they sit back and prepare to get us on the counter. And I think that is how you, you, you can use Odegaard and, and Emily smith Rowe to break them down. But if you're playing a team like Liverpool, you don't, you, then you don't use Emily smith Rowe and Martin Odegaard because then you're leaving yourself quite very, very exposed. But I think it's a video promised and a video delivered. I think um, that is how we can use Emily smith Rowe, And I think that is the difference between smith Rowe, um and, uh, and Martin Odegaard. They are very different. They are very different from how Semawa you know their arrival doesn't mean we can't sign house Semua. their arrival doesn't mean how Semua's transfer to arsenal is useless actually it makes more sense now that you have odegaard and emily smith row how Semua and thomas party it really really makes a lot of sense my name is kosi and um if you love this video smash the like button i speak to you very very soon subscribe to the channel get your comments in who is better emily smith row or Matt Odegaard, I'll speak to you very, very soon. Have a blessed day.